Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, the church does celebrate the 11th Sunday after Trinity, and I am basing my sermon this morning upon the, uh, the gospel appointed for us today, coming to us from the 18th chapter of the gospel of St. Luke, and I will read that portion to you right now. At that time, Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every man that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. Here again in this parable that our Lord spoke of the, par of the publican and the Pharisee. Remember again that a Pharisee was someone who was a member of the religious party of Jews, if you will, that prided themselves. And again, the key word is they prided themselves on absolute strict observance of the law, the Jewish law, the Mosaic law. Whereas the publican was, in essence, a tax collector. And he collected taxes, basically, for the Romans, who were the occupiers. So he was doubly hated in that sense. Not only did he take the money that the people had earned, but he gave it to those who they didn't want to be there. What I'd like to focus on, though, again, is this beginning part of this verse 9, which we just heard read to us. In verse 9, and he, meaning our Lord, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Did you ever meet someone like this in your life? I'm sure that you have. All of us at one time or another have met somebody that was full of themselves. They thought that they were the center of the entire world and they despised anybody else, quite frankly, that was not them. They looked down their nose in contempt at others because they didn't want to hear from anyone else. They wanted to be the center of the tension. They wanted to be the important person in the room. Certainly, in today's society in which we live, if you don't meet anybody like that in person, I bet you met them online. You go on these chat boards or in these message boards where they have messages and so forth, and there's always the one or two people that, that just have to ridicule anybody else that thinks differently from them, that has a different opinion than they do, that thinks differently, that's not from the same background, that has a different idea. These are commonly referred to as trolls or, as I like to call them, keyboard warriors. They make their thoughts known online on these internet, social chat pages, what have you, social media. 
and they're not interested in what anybody else has to say, what anybody else has to think. And if you are different or think differently than they do, they don't want to hear you. In essence, this was kind of how the Pharisees were. They saw themselves as the end-all and the be-all when it came to strict observance of the Mosaic law. And so certainly this is why, again, our Lord was speaking this parable to them because he hoped, hoped by telling this parable, maybe it would plant a seed, as I like to say, and get them to think about the way in which they view others. If first, though, we would go back to the previous chapter, the previous chapter of St. Luke, because you see there our Lord is still speaking to the Pharisees, but if we would listen and pay attention to this verse that I'm about to read to you, if we would listen and pay attention to what our Lord pointed out himself, if we would first think about this verse, to me it would be more difficult to look down our noses with contempt at others around us, to look down our noses with contempt and hatred and bitterness around others that don't agree as we do, that are different than us. Because back in the 17th chapter, again, it's the Pharisees. They're demanding of our Lord. They're demanding. And yes, I use that word specifically because in verse 20, we hear the following. And when he, meaning our Lord, when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. In other words, the Pharisees were, again, demanding that our Lord tell them, oh, since you know so much, why don't you tell us when the kingdom of God should come? And then in chapter 17, verse 21, our Lord did indeed give the response. Our Lord responded to the Pharisees and said, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God, our Lord stated, is within you. When you think about it, certainly, of course, this is true. Why wouldn't it be true? God was the one that created us. God was the one that gave us life. Our life came directly from him. This is why if we go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, the book of Genesis, we hear in chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Without a doubt, dear friends, if we think about this verse from Genesis reminding ourselves that God created us in his own image. And then we also remember the words of our blessed Savior that the kingdom of God indeed is within us. Isn't it difficult then? Very difficult when we remember those two verses to look with contempt at others around us. For you see, dear friends, God didn't just create me. He created you as well. God didn't just create those who loved him. God, in fact, created all those who don't love him. God created all of humanity. And all of humanity belongs to him. 
Now, whether or not we acknowledge God as our Father, whether or not we accept God as our Heavenly Father and abide by his teachings and try to do as he tells us, that's a different thing altogether, isn't it? But the fact remains, the words are true, true now as when they were written. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. My dear brothers and sisters, God created each and every one of us. And as such, for that reason alone, we should do our best to respect those around us, to do good to those around us, to hold others in respect for that fact alone. Why do we insist on treating others with hostility, with contempt? Why do we insist on despising those around us holding them with hatred in our hearts when we realize that they too were created in the image of God, just as we were. And our, words, our Lord's words himself in St. John's Gospel, St. John chapter 13, 34, reminds us very forcefully, our Lord stated a new commandment not a suggestion, he said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Our blessed Lord commanded us, as I stated, not suggested. He didn't say, a new suggestion I give to you, Try it out, and if it doesn't work, eh, forget about it. Our Lord said, a new commandment I give you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. As I've stated over the years, and I state this because I, I know from experience, as you do too, quite frankly, it's very difficult to love those who are not lovable. How are we supposed to love those who do not love us? How are we supposed to love those who do not show love? How are we called to love those who, to be honest with you, we can't even stand? We don't even like, but yet our Lord commands us to love them. Well, we know that we're not perfect. If we were perfect, there would be no need for our Heavenly Father to send His only Son into the world to save us from our sins. That being said, we are still called to try, to do our best, to do our utmost. And the example that we have in our blessed Lord is the best example that we could ever find. Because He Himself showed love to those who hated him, mocked him, spit on him, beat him, flogged him, and yes, even nailed him to the cross. Because it was from that very cross, dear friends, our Lord stated, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We are called again to love those who, quite frankly, we can't stand. This is not always easy, but life is not easy. We are called to do things which are hard, which are difficult, which are not easy to do. This is why, again, we can end all our message today with Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, when we recall the words, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
remembering, of course, that the same God who created you created your enemy. The same God who created you raised you, fed you, nourished you, blessed you. The same God who did all these things for you also continues to do these things for all of your brothers and sisters around you. Whether you agree with them or not, whether you like them or not, whether you love them or not. God, indeed, our Heavenly Father, has created all of us. And we are called to be his instrument to love one another as he has loved us. God bless you, my dear friends. God always be with you. God bless you, your loved ones, and your family. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless you, my dear friends.